Hello Cat Learners, I'm Jenny and I'm joined by Dylan. Hi Dylan. Hi. We're going to be talking about the economic reasons for using computers in this video. So Dylan, I'll kick off with this question. In what ways does computer use make economic sense? That's a really interesting question. Uh, let's, let's start off by, by saying that computers are a form mm. of technology. It's a digital technology, but there are all sorts of other technologies. The wheel is mm. a technology. Fire is a technology. Mm. And in their essence, what technologies do is they increase the abilities for humans to do work, productive work. So a technology is anything that makes a human able to do more. And there are a couple of ways in which that works. The, the one way is to increase productivity. So take the wheel as the example. Mm -hmm. uh, suddenly with the wheel, humans could carry or transport uh, far more goods than they were able to do if they were just putting them on their back or carrying them in their hands. They also reduce cost. Technologies tend to reduce cost, make things more efficient. You're able to do more with less, more work for less money. Uh, and I think the third thing, basically, that technologies allow is an increase in innovation, in creativity. Uh, again, let's take the example of the wheel. It might have started out as a round stone thing. Uh, very quickly, it was hooked up to an axle. Very quickly, mm. uh, a bucket was put on that axle, the cart. Then, then we had uh, horses and oxes added to that cart and then we had chariots and and now we've got modern cars mm. all based on that one simple initial innovation of the wheel but because of that technology we were able to innovate again and again and again and create new things and so where this becomes important for uh, the economy is basically what what an economy is is it's it's a bunch of people who are swapping goods and services uh, for some sort of, of, of money. Mm. Uh, uh, in, older, in older societies, it, it was barter. I gave you tomatoes, you gave me a chicken. We've moved on from that where we, we now have a, a cash or, or a money-based e economy. Mm. But basically what drives that activity is me producing something that you want, that you are willing to give me something for. And so what technology and computers, as an example, allow us to do is create all of those things that other people would like to pay money for, would like to give something that is dear to them for in exchange. And if technology allows us to do that more readily, if it allows us to do more with less, if it allows us to do that more cheaply, and if it allows us to create more of those goods and services, the innovation, well, then all of that sums up to driving the economy and driving economic growth. So what are some examples of the kinds of things that people would be buying, services and goods? Well, let's take an example close to home. Let's take Google. Mm. So we had the Internet. Uh, it was kind of a wild west, and it was pretty difficult to search on, that, on this environment. You, you, you couldn't readily find stuff. And then with technology came two guys who decided, well, let's try and organize this a little better. And so they built this application, the search engine mm. application, and they called it Google. And that now suddenly allowed us to find stuff that we wanted on the web. So that was the first innovation that improved our lives because it allowed us to do what we were doing a lot more efficiently. We could find mm. the stuff we wanted without it taking so long. And so even in that way, we were saving time and money elsewhere because we weren't having to devote that energy to searching. We could devote it to other things that were perhaps more productive. But then they decided to build AdWords into Google. And, and all that AdWords really are is an ability for, for big organizations and little organizations to advertise on the Internet and to have people find their business or their goods and, and service. And suddenly now you have Google, one of the most valuable companies in the world that 10, 15 years ago mm. didn't exist. Mm. And all of the economic value that that has driven. 
what Google has done is it's not just made money for its shareholders, and it's made a lot of money mm. <laughs> for its shareholders, but it's also made the internet part of our lives. And how many other goods and services are now transacted over the internet? How much other economic value has been generated by the fact that we're all able to connect to this thing and we're all able to derive some value from that? Okay, so let's just uh, play around with a couple of okay. uh, sectors, if you like. Let's take it to an accountant's life. Yeah. Uh, what's the economic value there of using computers? Well, do I you think, think? There, there are a couple of, of potential values, and the one is efficiency. Yes. The one is the ability to do fairly complicated computations mm -hmm. on a set of accounts that would, before digital technologies, would have had to be done by hand. And so accountants can now do a lot more work yes. with the same amount of effort because they've got this technology, these tools that are multiplying. And their then effort. they can generate the reports and submit yeah. those Absolutely. quite easily and, and, and quickly. And yeah, and I, and I think also they can also do, uh, they can also innovate in how accounting practice is, is done, in, in how you look at a set of accounts and in how you transmit that information to those stakeholders in perhaps that business that need to know that. Well, let's take it to a surgeon's life. Very interesting. Um, in many cases, surgeons are still very hands-on, and, mm. and we like that they about have to be. <laughs> surgeons. Um, they are still operating on your body with their own hands. But a surgeon's hands are not the most steady instruments in the world. No matter how good the surgeon is, there is always a slight tremor. And so increasingly, technology is being developed that allows a surgeon to operate remotely. So they may just be in the next room, but they're, what they're really doing is they're operating with a robot. And the benefits of that are threefold. Firstly, the robot is far easier, and that robotic environment is far easier to keep absolutely sterile. Mm -hmm. Because you're not walking in and out with human um, skin and, and all the rest of it. Secondly, that robot is capable of far more minute movements than a human is. And so even if the surgeon's hand is moving that far, the robot's hand can be moving maybe a tenth of a millimeter which for a human is just not possible. We just aren't capable of that kind of precision movement. And, and thirdly, we get away with the tremor. The robot doesn't tremor. Mm. And the robot doesn't make a mistake. Obviously, if the surgeon makes a mistake, the robot's going to simply replicate that mistake. But on its own, if the surgeon wants to cut there, that's exactly where the robot is going to cut. And in this process, we've been able to make surgery a lot more Efficient. Now, it might sound a little bit dehumanizing to say that, but what it's al allowed surgeons to do is to get through more surgeries mm -hmm. in the same amount of time, which brings the cost down. And we've been able to take many surgeries and make them routine, almost outpatient surgeries. And, and the term that we often use for that is keyhole surgery, mm, yeah. where you're able to draw uh, cut just a small incision rather than cutting the person completely open just a very small incision and through robotics and through other technologies like microfibers being able to see what's happening inside um, through, through um, um, fiber optics, um, you're able to do a lot of surgery that doesn't require such massive operation. Mm. So I think Cat Learners, perhaps you should expand on this, do some research, try and find out how the same kind of thing might occur if you're in agriculture, um, in engineering, in transport, logistics, uh, manufacturing, there must be a whole lot of things that you can find out and look at the economies uh, and, and things related to the economics of computer use. I, I can give you just one quickly, one example yes. of, of use in agriculture. Um, and and, and moving, moving from all the technology, the biological technology that's gone into new kinds of fertilizers, new kinds of seeds, um, GPS guided tractors and GPS guided harvesters is getting to the <laughs> point now where a farmer can harvest an entire field without being without there. being there. Oh, simply setting the coordinates That's in the tractor, and the tractor basically does the rest of the work for them. 
And doesn't harvest the wrong parts of the plant. Doesn't harvest the wrong parts okay. of the farm because it's guided by the GPS <laughs> coordinates. Obviously, it's going to be as good as the GPS coordinates it's given. But once those coordinates are in, um, the farmer can go do something else and leave the harvester really to harvest on its own. Wonderful. Amazing. Great example. <laughs> Let's turn this around now. I'd like to know whether it's possible to make money using computers. Absolutely. And many people <laughs> have made vast fortunes of money. We spoke about the, the Sergey Google. and Larry yeah. making Google. Uh, the other, the other um, example is, is, is Facebook. Uh, started by one guy in his university dorm room um, one night, really almost as a prank. Uh, suddenly becomes this enormously valuable company. That's not to say that everybody who tinkers with a computer is going to find that kind mm. of success. Those are still the outliers. Mm. Um, but with a computer, there is so much that you can do. You can build a little app, and you can sell that in one of the app stores, so the Google mm. App Store, the mm. Apple App Store. You can use a computer to create music, to create video, to create other forms of media. You can use computers to analyze other people's information and data. You can use computers to connect with other people and, and, and help them make the connections that are going to add value to them. So in all of these, the computer really becomes the tool, the tool. for your own imagination. Mm. It's not going to do the work for you, but it is going to be a tool in your hand that will allow you to, to do stuff that you couldn't do without it. Mm. And it really then depends on you as the individual and, and your entrepreneurial drive and spirit and acumen as to whether you make a lot of money from this or not. Um, and some of this is unfortunately chance. But mm -hmm. you, as Gary Player once said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. So the more you do this, the more you explore, the more you experiment, the more you put yourself out there and, and build stuff, the luckier you probably are going to get. And so... We've seen that there's some economic benefits, certainly there, there are, and I think it would be very interesting for you, cat learners, to go and have a look at how you could possibly make the most of your skills in a financially beneficial way for you. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us.